this is going to impact society. It's already impacting society. It's all in the scriptures. Like yeah. it's all there. This stuff leaking into the church. It's over, you see how yeah. it's leaking? It's leaking into our chat, fam. It's overpopulated because everyone wants to go to the same church. The frustrating part about this is like, we'll say stuff like, well, you know, Paul said it's better not to be married. Paul was writing to a very specific people at a very specific time. If you give your life to Jesus and the Holy Spirit enters you, everything changes. Bruce Lawn. A topic that you're going to be hearing more and more about that you aren't hearing about right now, and that is the topic of incels. Incels. What are incels? Incels is a demographic of folks who are involuntarily celibate. Now, why is this relevant? Well, it's relevant for a couple of different reasons. One, there's a huge demographic of, of men that on a macro scale in America and in the West are, le are getting married less, are engaging with relationships less, are having a hard time. And this is going to impact a lot of folks in the church. This is, this is already impacting the rates at which men go to college, the rates at which men earn, and this is going to affect society on a macro scale. The stats are like only 40% go to college. So they're losing out to women there in a big way. And women with degrees don't marry men who That's don't right. have degrees. Mass shootings is a uniquely male crime. Hmm. It's always because some dude in Buffalo you know, had somebody swipe left on him too much. That, I mean, I feel like that's what's going on here is is a lot of that's dark humor. sort of maleness coming to the Definitely fore and uh, announcing itself in violence and racism and hatred. If you're wondering how this affects society, this is how it impacts society. Mm. Because they're lonely and lost the and most, feel that they are not useful in society. The most uns How did we get there? The most unstable nations in the world have one thing in common. And that is they have too many lonely, broke, and alone men. It's the right. dangerous person in the world. Someone Rusty wasn't attacked because of a fatwa. He was attacked because a guy was living in his mother's basement. We have, we have a crisis among young men, and it starts at a young age. Young men are twice as likely on a behavior-adjusted basis to be suspended. Seven in ten high school valedictorians are women. For every two female graduates from college in the next five years, you only have one. The scariest stat... For every two female graduates, you only have one man. That's crazy. Walking down the avenue that is America, only one in three men under the age of 30 have had sex in the last year. You hear sex and your brain fires, but the bottom line is, it's a key step to the elemental... That's crazy. That's nuts. ...foundation of any society, and that is relationships. Men, young men aren't attaching to work, they aren't attaching to women, they aren't attaching to schools. We are producing too many of the most dangerous person in society. Whoa. And we are losing out on a key... We're not going to have kids, we're not going to have a productive society, we're going to have more violence, and also we're going to have a society that does not value... Uh, young men, and they do not. Young men are different. They develop later. And by the way, if you're a young man, this work from home thing is a disaster. They need young men. Young men need young men need guardrails. They need to know how to read a room. They need to put on a clean shirt. They know not to get high or drink too much during the week, and then get into the office the next day. We have a crisis among young men. It is it is it is it is one of the most. It might be one of the most dangerous things in our society. And so this is a clip from Michaela Peterson. Michaela Peterson and her podcast and she's talking about she's talking to William Costell who is the leading expert on this topic he is doing his uh, PhD work or he just did his PhD work with Dr. David Buss uh, so how many people are we talking about here or what percentage of the population actually identifies in cells a smaller significant minority of the population but we're talking less than a hundred thousand I would say I would estimate and then someone would probably correct me if I'm wrong there would actually identify <laughs> online in the online subculture. But then if you define incel as, you know, just a, a man who's struggling to, to get sex, those are rising mm -hmm. all the time. And there's a figure that the share of US men younger than 30 reporting having no sex within the last year rose from 8% in 2008 to 28% in 2018. Okay, so the figure of US men mm -hmm. under 30 okay. who have not had sex in the last year not single men. Yep. Men. Is there, okay. Having no sex within the last year rose from 8% in 2008 to 28% in 2018. That's crazy. My thought goes to what if there was a spiritual revival and all these people just. They're all celibate now? Yeah, they're all celibate. They're <laughs> waiting, they're waiting until marriage. Happening. Okay, okay. No, we're, these. This There's is, probably another factor. This is also men who are married. They're not talking about single men. <gasps> so if it was just single men, I'd be like, yeah, it's not that big of a deal. Okay. Right? Yeah. Okay, let's keep watching. It's not all men that are getting more sexless. Uh, there's a small minority of men at the top that are doing very well. So to put that into context, compared to 2002, men overall had the same number of sex partners in 2013. 
but the top 20% of men had a 25% increase in sexual partners, and the top 5% of men had an even more dramatic 38% increase. The top 20% of men are doing well, but the bottom 80% are just completely striking out. Okay. And it, and it really consolidates to the top 5% of, percent of men are having their pick of partners, right? So how is this impacting folks who are Christians? Right? That means that if you're an average looking guy who's a Christian, this is also skewing over to the type of guys that are getting married. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so this is and, and, and on top of that, people that are, are already married that are, again are being are not getting are in sexless marriages. So is that is that due to low testosterone or what? I don't I don't I don't think that's due to low testosterone. And then what's the factor that remember is... it's involuntarily celibate. They they want uh. to they want to be sexually active, but but it's they're involuntary celibate. So what what is that factor? What's the involuntary aspect of it? No one want to get with them. Was it, why do their wives not want to get with them? I don't know. Low T. They they have low T, therefore their wives don't want to be with them. Yeah, maybe. Probably due to the porn industry, harder economy, so more of them are living with their parents. Ah. And no commitment in the dating market. And um, there's also going to be a somewhat of a cultural drive towards singlehood. Um you know, like even big companies are kind of maybe encouraging women in particular to kind of remain single. Um, mm -hmm. With Chris Williamson, we were talking about a recent article whereby it was highlighting how single women can earn a lot more money and, um, you know, they're doing a lot better than single men in their career. And it's kind of this maybe cultural drive to prioritize the male default of uh, CEO, boardroom, badass type feminism, that that's seen as priority over the, uh, the kind of the polar opposite of the trad wife, uh, family oriented woman. It's it's kind of maybe an acknowledgement that the gender pay gap was never really real uh, insofar yeah. as it's more like a motherhood penalty. And that is where women do get punished is uh, women actually, and certainly in the UK, earn just as much or even more than men up until the age of 29, I believe. And then the motherhood penalty maybe kicks in. But it's only describing it as a penalty if you consider the woman's own income herself. Married women, actually, their income would be more than the single women. So he's saying that, that that the women are being more incentivized to remain single longer. You get married, you're gonna have a, your husband's gonna have an expectation for you to have the child. You have a child, you get completely thrown out of your corporate career. Uh, you get stunted. and then you take a bet. You you pay cut in your yeah. earning potential because you took a break in your career to start a family, and women aren't incentivized to do that. And there's more and more single women that are rising mm. up. They said by the year 2030, 45% of all working women will be single. Interesting. Interesting. Women are getting more opportunities in the marketplace, which I think is a good thing. And then from the other side, men aren't being incentivized in the same ways. They're so, not going to college to the yeah. same rates. How is this not beneficial from a Christian worldview? If people are getting married less and less, and then this also bleeds into the church. Mm -hmm. So now women are, are encouraged to get married later and later. So now they're least, less and less likely to start families. And the longer you wait, the harder it is to start a family. Okay. Right? Yeah, yeah. This is biology. I'm yeah. sorry. It is what it is. <gasps> and then men are also not, don't have the same pool of women because the, the women they would normally date 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, all want to go and have careers and be boss babes. Yep. And so you and then there's no incentive to to be a man of God because they are less likely uh, to get married. So then there's no incentive to get married and have mm. non sinful sex. OK, because the pool of women are also buying into this whole I need to be a boss babe. And that definitely is affecting Christian women. OK, yeah, I right? see. It. I see it for sure. Right. And so there's nothing wrong with a woman being educated, having a career, so on and so forth. It's yep. just when all of college and all of education is swaying towards that. All of this is going to affect the family nucleus, mm. as Patrick would say. <laughs> All of this what is age? going to affect the nuclear family. P people are having less sex, which from a Christian worldview can be like, oh, this is actually good. Mm -hmm. But it's not for the reason of desiring to stay abstinent. It's for it's for this distancing of the nuclear family, of this desire to have kids, to have mm -hmm. a traditional, more traditional life. Mm -hmm. And that can carry over to the church mm -hmm. where you see more um, men in their 30s, more women in their late 30s, unmarried, and now maybe possibly living in sin because it's it's been so long. Hookup culture is on the rise. Mm -hmm. You've never been able to meet 
a Christian girl, godly Christian girl, so on and so forth. So it's 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 being hit from both sides. It's a, it's a both and, right? Yeah. So it's not that stronger women make men less confident. That's actually not it. It's women who think that they need to act like men yep. aren't going to be attractive to men that want to get married and have families. Mm. So how how likely do you think it is that this bleeds into the church versus the church being an outlier? Well, I think right now the church is an outlier because the, the because there's like generational uh, benefits, right? Like my wife was indoctrinated in some of the same nonsense, mm. but she got around godly married women who didn't look like goofy stay-at-home moms that have terrible fashion, that have no purpose, that have no right because that was that's the caricature. Yeah, the stay-at-home soccer mom. Yeah, right, and so. When she got exposed to strong women uh, that that but that but that weren't independent from their man, that weren't independent from a marriage, right? They were independent from society's expectations of them. Mm. Then her paradigm started to change as she got around more, more moms. That that's that 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 becomes a cultural environmental shift. The church becomes an outlier because there's women like this in the church. But if you don't ever go to a church, yeah, right. And 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 all your you only hear one thing your entire life, which is you need to grow up, be strong, independent of a man, and be a boss, babe. And then you wonder why, as a woman, you're having trouble meeting men because men men who want to have families aren't looking for that. They're not attracted mm. to that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. People are much more socially awkward due to not meeting to interact in person. More and more women are identifying as asexual these days. Yikes! Asexual just means tired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also interested in incels because uh, this demographic of young men, traditionally in evolutionary psychology, we have something called young male syndrome. And basically young male syndrome is the consistent cross-cultural, cross-historical finding that in any population, when you have a surplus population of unpartnered young men, of sexless young men, uh, they cause a lot of crime and they disrupt society a lot. This is okay. due to, they usually have like elevated status seeking behaviors and in any society where there's a high percentage of unpartnered young men, you will see higher rates of crime because they have a higher status seeking propensity. That's insane. Risk taking. Uh, so it's actually quite dangerous. And uh, historically, there's been lots of kind of institutions developed to even deal with um, individual nations, surplus population of young men. So for hmm. example, the Portuguese, uh, who when they maybe went sailing to discover new worlds, uh, there are some theories that that was basically a, a device to cope with your surplus population of young men. You could just send them off on a mission. And uh, Vikings would be another example. We, we tend to think of Vikings as perhaps a very sexy, kind of rugged, maybe the Hollywood kind of Viking isn't probably really typical of what a Viking was like uh, in reality. They were more likely your surplus population of unmarried wow. young men. Yeah, uh, there's a really cool article in the... Whoa, that's a trip. Because well, well, Vikings are known for pillaging and... and yeah, R wording children, the, the the women and yep. killing the children and that's crazy. This is this is going to impact society. It's already impacting society. It's a bunch of like gamers that pull up on a super fire boat and like go to pillage a city. Yeah, he says the Vikings were incels basically. <laughs> so, 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 right. so, take so, your wife. so, so, what's the solution here, right? Like, what's the solution here? I know I'm I'm pointing something out. I'm pointing something out on purpose because the anecdote to this. Is Jesus. Whoa. Have no doubt about it. Whoa. Jesus too. If a man becomes a born-again follower of Jesus, there's something supernatural that happens in that man's heart. Let's go. The trajectory of his life changes. Okay. Everything about his mentality changes. We are giving an incomplete assessment of what a born-again transformation happens in a man's heart. Unpack that. We say it's get your hell insurance. Hell insurance. You'll become a nice guy. You'll become sweet. Sweet and a meek, a, a meek guy. Mm. And that is an incomplete truth of what it means to be a follower of Jesus. Wow. So if, if, if we're giving this mad, soft, gentle, flowery, tucked in shirt, soft music, piano loud in church mm -hmm. version of what it means to be a follower of Jesus, right? And then there's only one or two guys, and they're usually the guys on stage, you know what I mean, with the yeah. microphone and the crowd around them and the rest of the crowd, right? And, and so 
the reality is if you give your life to Jesus and the Holy Spirit enters you, everything changes. May not happen instantly, but the trajectory in your mindset changes. How you view your role as a man as a, in society changes. Everything changes. Mm. And I think in an attempt to appeal to culture, in an attempt to uh, be as egalitarian as possible and be as accommodating as possible, we've set the bar lower and 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 say things like, well, it's okay if you're not perfect. Well, it's okay if fill in the blank, right? And it's like Christian culture has um, equated the attitude of a Christian man and the attitude of a Christian woman to be the same exact thing. Yes. You guys are both meek, quiet. Yes. And you and 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 when someone relinquishes responsibility, when someone relinquishes personal responsibility, and I don't care if this is the seeker friendly church, I don't care if this is the the Calvinist church, whenever personal choice and personal responsibility is is, is relinquished, meaning that you are the way you are because you've been victimized, it's not your fault. Mm. Or you are the way you are because it's God's providence and God's sovereignty. Okay. Right? That's that's the hyper Calvinist theology though they say it's not that it's still connected to that to an extent yeah. right like if everything if god's sovereign and everything is predestined and your lot in life is your lot in life if you're a sloppy not good looking guy who just has no luck with women and te- dress <laughs> terribly well that's your lot in life bud yeah instead of saying no 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 no, jesus makes you born again and transforms you inside out and as someone that's inside out your trajectory changes your mentality is shifted who you are on this side of eternity is impacted for eternity and we give an incomplete, we give this incomplete gospel, mm. right? We we make a whole lot of salvation and grace and faith, and a whole little of sanctification and consecration. So, what what would it look like to teach this stuff without being, with with still having a well rounded theological sermon? I think you teach the truth of the gospel, but I think men are I think men need to stop like watering down and trying to curate and trying to be perfect and speak in a pastoral voice in the sense of presentation. Like, I think it needs to be a little bit more raw and aggressive Minimalist and straight vibes. to the point. It's all in the scriptures. Like, yeah. it's all there. You want to be a great husband? It's in the scriptures. You want to be a great provider? It's in the scriptures. Mm-hmm. You, 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 and the scriptures are, are, are aggressive at times about this. They are. And they're balanced, by the way. They're balanced. Yeah, yeah. Right? So we can read Proverbs and say, discipline, Work the land, don't chase fantasies, become capable, become competent, right? Yep. And then you have to read Proverbs in context of Ecclesiastes. Of But at the end of the day, it's all meaningless. Yes. What are you building your lot in? Enjoy your life, enjoy your marriage, enjoy these things. And then you look at uh, 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 Job, which I just listened to on a plane ride to, 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 uh, to Dallas. I listened through the whole book of Job. And then Job is like, you can do all the right things, but sometimes tragedy is just going to happen. Yeah. yeah. And you don't, really control everything as much as you think you do. You can do all So all those has to be written read in context, right? Like it all has to be read in context. Generally speaking, if you do A, B, and C, if you reap, you sow. If you work the land, things, good things will happen, so on and so forth. However, that's not really the point of life. And by the way, tragedy can happen and things can totally derail you and you you, just, you, don't, you don't know what life could throw at you, right? Yeah. So 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 like it's a, it's a holistic picture of these things that I believe we have the antidote. I believe we have the answer. I believe I believe this is why guys like Carl Lentz were popular. Mm. I believe this is why guys like Mark Driscoll were popular. Yeah. But oftentimes, the bigger you get, the more insulated you get, the least likely you are to, to have those checks and balances, the accountability, all those different things not checked and not properly navigated. Yeah. And then, and then we also have an institutional issue where if you're charismatic, smart, handsome, good-looking, you will then fall into a... I guess you're the pastor. Yeah. If you're talented, a musician, a creative, I guess you're the worship leader. Yeah, that makes sense. There hasn't been another option and opportunity for men to be in church, but not necessarily have to be one of those two things. That's interesting. Bro. Right there. There we go. Playing devil's advocate. If the antidote was indeed Jesus, then marriage wouldn't exist. We were created to worship God, not get married and procreate. God would continue the human race one way or another. Uh, I think it's and both. I think it's and both. I think it's I think it's yes, we are to get married and we are to have our consentment in in, in Jesus. I don't I think that's a false binary. Gotcha. I think that's an absolutely false binary. I think the very continuation of our species is as a proxy of reproducing. The ideal way to reproduce is in a one man, one woman marriage, covenant covenantially speaking. 
Yeah. It's the ideal way. And a majority of people are going to want to be married and reproduce, at least reproduce. Most then, men, then they are most be like, men want kids. Yeah. Most men want kids. That yeah. is driven in you. That is, that is it wired yeah. in you. You're talking about First Corinthians? Yeah, I, I just I, I just I just listened to the book of First Corinthians. I think that was a very specific instruction to a very specific people. And I don't think Paul was saying don't be unmarried. Yeah. I think he was telling them, hey, persecution might break out. It's breaking out in Rome. You guys are in a port city, in a very metropolitan progressive city. Um, it might get bad. You might want to consider not getting married. The reason why it's important to be biblically literate is because you have to look at scripture within its context. Yeah. Within its context, it also means who is he writing to? Who is he writing to? Right? So when Jesus says, you'll do greater works than these, and we go, we're going to have Avengers powers and do greater works than these. Come on, be Jesus. That's not what that's saying. Yeah. That's speaking to a very specific group of people. When, when Jesus says, you're, you're, you're not healed because of your lack of faith, and this is before the Holy Spirit, and now the Holy Spirit is in us, how can you not have faith if you're a born-again person filled with the Holy Spirit? It's not, you don't get your healing because you don't have your, everything is not written for everybody. Mm. And every part of the scriptures isn't applicable to you. <gasps> If you're reading Job, this is this is this is this is this is what I mean. Is the book of Job literally and prescriptively the word of God for every single person that reads it? <laughs> That's an interesting view. It is not. No. Because the majority of Job is his goofy friends arguing with him. Yeah. That is not applied to you. Yeah, yeah, There's yeah. stuff in scripture that's poetic. There's stuff in scripture that's a literary device. There's stuff in scripture that's not intended for you. Leviticus is not intended for you. So you're reading 1 Corinthians assuming that that's a prescription to all Christians everywhere, and it's not. Someone's going to go out, buy a $2,000 e-bike, and not be able to pay rent and be like, I'm Job. Right. This is it. I'm being persecuted. He's taking away my things. For some reason, I couldn't pay rent. It is written for you, but not to you. Come on, Apology Center. Shout out to the, to the official pastors in here. So it's like <laughs> we, we have such a low biblical literacy that you're reading stuff and you're assuming that it is the, the prescriptive word of God to you. When, when Paul is writing, it's a shameful for a man to have long hair. That doesn't mean that the homie Chris with long hair the homie Chris is needs out of to... pocket. That's not, what that, Pat, that's not what that's saying. I'm going to have a Levitical law dress code for the workplace. Right? When, 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 when Paul says women shouldn't speak in church, okay. that doesn't mean your wife literally can't make a sound in church. So that's the, the frustrating part about this is like, we'll say stuff like, well, you know, Paul said it's better not to be married. Paul, Paul was writing to a very specific people at a very specific time. Yeah. Most men are want to get married. We, you want to talk about overpopulation? The, the entire population of the world can fit into the state of Texas with everybody having 1,500 square feet. <gasps> For real? <laughs> For real. <laughs> what? 1,500? Everyone, Bro, all the people in all the world. so much. All the people in all the world. That doesn't mean we're going to be comfortable. That doesn't mean we're all getting a farm. That means everyone yeah. can be squeezed in the state of Texas. And each person gets 1,500 square and feet? And every person can have 1,500 square feet. Miss me with the deep uh, overpopulation nonsense. Wait, that's a lot of that's a lot of square feet, though. That's not. I thought it was like packed, arm to no, arm. No, 1,500 square feet. Oh, it's like you could build a, you could build a 1,200 square foot house and still have a 300 square foot yard. <laughs> Yes, you can have yes. for yourself. This is a fact. This is a fact. So all you goobers that are like overpopulation, no, that's not what that's about. That's not that. No, we are to we are to populate the earth. Get on an airplane, and as it's taking off, and as it's coming down, look around at how much land there is. That's a fact. There's a lot of land, fam. That's a fact. And yes, we shouldn't chop down the rainforest. We shouldn't right all of that. I'm all for all that. Don't do that. That's bad. Don't 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 mess yeah, with it. No, no one care about Vegas. Right right. <laughs> You got a don't, lot of land there. Don't 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 uh, let off unnecessary carbon emissions. Don't do those things. Absolutely, totally. However, let's stop acting like men don't want kids. Let's stop acting like <laughs> most people don't want to. Let's stop acting like we're not hard hardwired to want to recreate and to push on our species. We're working on it now. Shout out to you. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 absolute nonsense. And this stuff. And again, this stuff leaking into the church. You it's, see what I'm saying? It's over, you see how yeah. it's leaking? It's leaking into our chat, fam. It's overpopulated because everyone wants to go to the same church, and it's overpopulated because everyone wants to live in the same 25-mile radius. But whose fault is that? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so anyway, guys, men are hurting. Not sure if you got it, and I think we need to stop with this sissified, soft, uh, emasculating gospel. Stop lowering the bar. Stop, stop with the... Tell people the truth. If you want to follow Jesus, you're saved by grace through faith, but it'll cost you everything. Tell people the truth. 
And it's actually in your best interest to live your life the way God cause you to live your life. It's simple, but it's not easy, but it is the best thing you could possibly do. And it literally works out everything. So this notion of like, yeah, let's just watch, let's just, let's just lower the bar for everyone. Let's create the easiest on-ramp. That'll get a lot of folks in the door, but will it actually turn to, will we actually create disciples? Obviously give this video a like. That's the best way you can support, the easiest way to support. Subscribe to both channels, Bless God Studios, as well as this channel. And the extra mile the consistent $5 a month, $10 a month is on Patreon. That's where these AMAs get posted. That's where you could tune in and watch back as we do these in real time and watch me say stuff I probably shouldn't say and have to edit out and all that kind of stuff. All that's on Patreon.